Hi, I'm Daryl Bricker. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Ipsos Public Affairs, arguably the largest uh, polling organization in the world. So we know a little bit about the topic that we're going to be talking about today, which is polling for journalists. What you need to know about those polls that are increasingly crossing your desk. Uh, Today, if you're a journalist, you're working on a 24-hour news cycle, you're inundated by information that's coming in, you have to make fast decisions about what's going to be making it into your news broadcast that night or what's going to be making it into your newspaper. And when it comes to polls, sometimes it's pretty hard to tell what's good and what's not. Increasing number of methodologies from people that you may know, people that you may not know, there's some basic questions that you should be asking, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this series. Very basic, no BS bottom line questions that a journalist should be asking about any poll that comes in because you know what you have a right to know. Let's talk about data collection. That's the process of actually collecting information from the public. So how do we get that information? How do we interview them? When I started back in the prehistoric age of this industry, we were still doing a lot of what we call face-to-face -face interviewing or male uh, panel interviewing. Still do that, that some way in, uh, in, in some countries, but definitely not in North America. It's not a popular way of doing interviewing. And the reason for that is it takes an awful long time. And for example, if you're looking at an election campaign, running a survey for three months isn't going to exactly uh, hit your target in terms of providing people with timely and accurate information about what's happening in that campaign. So we moved on to something that was faster and in many ways more representative because it covered all most households and that was telephone interviewing. Uh, first it started off with landline interviewing but now what we're moving over to is uh, a combination of landline plus cell phone and by the way I know we call you at dinner, dinner time sometimes and I do apologize for that. We've moved on to another type of interviewing since uh, the development of, uh, of, of telephone interviewing to online interviewing and actually most research in North America now gets done online and we do that, that interviewing by accessing people who have agreed to uh, participate in surveys with us. Uh, that sounds like uh, it may create some problems, and it does, but by and large, the surveys that are, that are generated that way are actually pretty accurate, and we're getting better and better at being able to do it. Uh, but there is a question, for example, about whether or not people who are offline uh, who don't have access to, uh, say, a computer or access to the internet, whether or not that they're important to represent in these surveys. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. But if you're a journalist and say, for example, you want to deal with something like low-income people who are impoverished, that probably is a big, uh, a big issue that you want to uh, take, uh, you want to take another look at. And then finally, we're moving on to uh, something called IVR, which is interactive voice recording or robocalls. So imagine that you get a call on the phone, you pick it up. There's a robot voice on the other end and says, dial one for this, dial two for that, press one for this, press three for that. Uh, there's a lot of problems associated with that. For example, on a regular telephone interview, uh, if a person doesn't understand a question, they can ask for clarification. What happens if you put in the wrong code or you miss something? There's all sorts of issues that are associated with that. But actually, the biggest issue is the fact that almost nobody responds to those kinds of calls. Uh, the response rates are usually between 1% and 3%. So that means you're missing over 90% of the population who's probably eligible for interviewing and you're interested in hearing from. So you have to do all sorts of uh, re-weighting and adjusting the data and all sorts of uh, uh, manipulation of the information in order to make it even look like it's reasonably representative and then that might cause all sorts of other problems on the main questions that you want to ask. Um, and quite frankly that applies to any one of these survey methodologies. We talked about sampling and weighting in, in, a, in, a, in a previous video and that very much applies to understanding whether or not these things are accurate. So what I would say is if you're a journalist and you're looking at a survey that's been presented on your desk, one of the first things you're going to want to find out is how that survey was done, how those data were collected from people, and then how the survey research company dealt with those issues that I just stated about what the problems are with each of those methodologies. And you should ask those questions and you should be told those answers because you have a right to know. 